Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Kelly Goes Crunchy. Shout out to you, Kelly. You asked, where does dust actually come from? Great question. If you've ever wiped a shelf only to find it dusty again five minutes later, you're not alone. Dust seems to appear out of thin air because, well, it kinda does. So if you've ever wondered what this fuzzy stuff is made of, get ready because today we're digging into the gritty, grimy truth about dust right here on Explaining Everything. Let's get straight to it. Dust is the world's least glamorous snow. It doesn't sparkle, it doesn't smell like cinnamon, and it doesn't come with a snow day. It's just gross. But what exactly is dust? In scientific terms, it's a mix of particles so random. It's like the universe emptied its junk drawer right onto your floor. We're talking flakes of dead skin, bits of fabric, tiny crumbs from nowhere, the ghosts of bugs, pollen, mold spores, and if you have pets, congratulations, your furniture is now part cat. If your home has carpets, you're living on a massive dust sponge. Those things hold on to particles like they've got abandonment issues. And ceiling fans? They might look innocent, but they're dust harvesting helicopters, silently whirling and seasoning the air like passive aggressive blenders. Now, let's get into the real question. Where is this stuff even coming from? Why does it keep showing up uninvited, like a clingy X or a forwarded chain email from 2006? Well, the truth is, dust has many homes, and one of them is inside your home. The majority of household dust starts right where you live. Your furniture, your carpet, your clothes, your curtains. All of it is constantly breaking down, shedding tiny fibers like they're auditioning for a dandruff commercial. And then there's the outside world, Every time you open a window or a door, you are personally inviting the outdoors in. The breeze carries in pollen, soil particles, and tiny bits of pollution like nature's version of glitter. Hard to see and impossible to get rid of. And of course, the main character in this dusty drama is you. And it's not just you. If you live with other people, or pets, or houseplants, congratulations! Your entire household is a team of tiny particle distributors. Even your dog is contributing, wagging his tail and blasting fur into the air like some kind of cute biological leaf blower. And let's not forget the real villains of this story. Insects. Bugs die in your home all the time. You may not see it, you may not hear it, but their microscopic little bodies decompose into particles that float around your house like really depressing snowflakes. In short, dust comes from everything. It's the result of living, moving, existing, and sometimes just breathing near a rug. If you've ever wondered what's actually in the dust bunnies behind your dresser, Brace yourself. It's not cute. It's not magical. It's not going to be sold in a candle anytime soon. Let's zoom in. Imagine taking a pinch of dust and putting it under a microscope. What do you see? You'll find skin flakes, stray hairs, little bits of fuzz. And if you're really lucky, you'll discover the horrifying mascot of the dust world. The dust mite. Dust mites are tiny arachnids that live in your bedding, your upholstery, your carpets. They don't bite. They don't sting. They just hang out and eat your dead skin. That's their entire career. And then they poop. And those microscopic poop particles, 
They become part of your household dust. Yes, your bed is full of invisible bugs eating your skin and then sprinkling their excrement all around like deranged little party hosts. In some areas, scientists have even found traces of heavy metals and illegal substances in household dust. So, technically, your bookshelf is doing harder drugs than you are. The kicker? Dust is alive. Not in the Frankenstein sense, but in the microbiological one. It's full of bacteria, fungal spores, and viral hitchhikers just waiting to be breathed in. So you clean. You vacuum. You dust every visible surface until your arms fall off. You light candles to make it smell like victory. And then, two days later, there it is again. Dust. Back like a bad sequel. Why? Because dust never really leaves. It regenerates. And air doesn't help. Every breeze, every footstep, every time you plop down on the couch like a triumphant walrus, you send dust flying into the air like a microscopic confetti cannon. It settles. And then it rises again. It's the world's saddest little indoor weather system. Even your electronics are helping. Screens and cords produce static electricity, which pulls dust out of the air like magnetized lint vampires. Behind your TV, there's probably a whole secret colony of fuzz that's achieved self-awareness. So what can you do about it? Is it possible to win the war on dust? Not really, but you can make life a little less fluffy. Vacuum often. Use one with a filter that doesn't just blow the dust back out like a cranky dragon. Wipe surfaces with a damp cloth instead of just pushing the dust around like a confused street sweeper. Wash your bedding regularly, not just when it starts smelling like a forgotten camping trip. And that's where dust comes from. A chaotic mix of skin cells, fabric fuzz, outdoor particles, and the occasional bug fragment, all swirling together to form the mysterious fluff haunting your shelves. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.